Welcome everybody to the second round of my mock draft. This is how you know WFA is going someplace. We got a second round going. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I decided to do this because there are a lot of teams that are only drafting after the first round is over, so I decided to give some pop to some of those guys, and there are a lot of good prospects that are still not going to be talked about if I only did the first round. So um, we're going to go through, we're going to hit all the teams that are going to be drafting in the second round, and uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. So uh, let's move right into uh, the number 20 overall pick. So first up is the Wyoming Cavalry, and I have them going with one of my favorite players from the Rise League this season, wide receiver Dave Beaner of the Raleigh Oaks. Dave Beaner is a home run threat, had a lot of yards after catch, had an 80-yard touchdown. Uh, he was all over the place. Um, he averaged 22 yards per reception, which is leading uh, leading the league. He also led in touchdowns with four. Um, so this is a big play target, uh, and I think that's what Wyoming needs. They need a little smaller guy to get in between uh, some of their big monsters. So I think Dave Beaner is the right selection here. Another pretty easy selection. Uh, we have the Louisiana Steamers. They needed a defensive tackle, so why not go with the best guy on the board, Vernon Campbell. Um, I think this would be a perfect selection for the Louisiana Steamers. Uh, he was first among defensive tackles in sacks with two and a half in only five games played. Um, and like he, he was a great force for, once again, the Raleigh Oaks. Uh, he had um, a couple of tackles for loss as well. So this is a guy who I, I think would be a good fit for Louisiana Steamers. Learn under um, the defense that they have there. And uh, Jean-Baptiste St. Croix, uh, defensive tackle. I think this would be a good spot for him. The Des Moines Corn Kings are looking to replace um, their cornerback. They need another spot there. Currently have a silver and a bronze. So let's go ahead and give them one with Fagu Gaipen uh, at cornerback, playing for the Fargo Freeze. Uh, tied for second in interceptions with four. Um, this is a guy who also tied for top in deflections. Him and Chad Kruger had identical um, spots there, splitting sides, so um, this guy could be a first round pick. He was listed as one. He just slipped for me a little bit. Um, and, and I think he, he could very well uh, go here um, to the Des Moines Corn Kings. Next up to the Pottsville Maroons. They took Trey Tucker in the first, so their running back is set. And let's slide over to their defensive line. I think they could take Jackie Nimble here. Now, they do have a bronze defensive end alongside the Bulldozer, um, but I do think that you can probably improve on that if you're looking to have that spot. And I think Jackie Nimble, second in sacks with three, um, playing for the Thunder Bay uh, Dragons. He also comes in, and he, he's just a force on that defensive line. Um, and I, I think he would be a good fit, at least name-wise, uh, with Pottsville. It's the kind of guy that they like, so I think Jackie Nimble uh, would be a good selection. Another team that we haven't talked about yet is the Vegas Venom, and they'll be coming up at number 24. Uh, they have a couple spots they need to fill. We'll get to their other pick uh, later in the draft, but for now I have them taking DeJasper Cruz Jr., at guard, they need a new starting guard, and I think this would be a good spot to grab one. Uh, Cruz comes in at 6'6", 330, and uh, that's a great <laughs> great spot for a guard. Uh, not much more to say, uh, but I think having him in there uh, boosts your offensive line ability uh, next to a former high draft pick, Pete Palmerson, uh, should be a really good spot. After selecting Illinois Jones in the first half to fill up their defense, let's slide over to the offense, help out Indiana at wide receiver. And I think using uh, this user, uh, Kyle Finnamore, wide receiver from the Oaks, would be a good uh, slot pick for this team. He comes in, slot him right in there. Um, he was second in receptions with 30, 
he had 341 yards um, really really talented player I think having him in your locker room is going to help out significantly for a new team Next up, we're back with Miami, and in a different draft, the player that they are able to select would be a top five pick, but because of how everything shakes out, I think Trevor Rivers could slide into the second round. Um, leader in tackles with 36. Um, he was all over the field. He was playing in a... He, he had a good, There was a good linebacker core around him, and he shone over all of them. Um, I think this is a great talent. If you're able to get him in the second round, it would be incredible. Um, Trevor Rivers from Tucson uh, would be a really, really good... If, if, if Miami's able to get him this far down, I think it could be a really good, good pick for them. And coming in next is the Santa Fe Prowl. Santa Fe, I'm not sure what their plan at running back is, but I think it could be leading up to Storm... Peyton, the running back for, that played for the Fargo Freeze this past offseason. Um, he was second in yards with 428, uh, third in rushing yards per attempt. That is a 3.1 average. It's pretty, pretty solid. Um, wasn't able to get into the end zone much, um, but I feel like on this team, he could have more opportunities to score. Um, we'll see if that is what Derek decides to do, but I think this would be a good option for them if this is how the draft shakes out. Next we slide back to uh, the Louisiana Steamers and they need some offensive line help so I think they go with the third fist brother Morpheus Fist uh, coming over from the Raleigh Oaks he stands at 6'3 355 this guy is not going to get moved easily and I think going to Louisiana this guy can clog up the lanes and help their running game finally wake up again and start rolling the way that they would like it to. Um, and I think that would be a great, great option. Helping out TD Hard Hardvigson as well. Keeping Louisiana in the competitive juices that they want. We have another user checking in here at pick 29 with the Jamaica Hummingbirds. I think that they go with 6-3-2-10, cornerback Victor Moreno. Um, Jamaica, they need some help there next to Parker Thomas on the other side. I think drafting Victor Moreno would be a great way to have um, some talent in that secondary. He could go a lot higher than this, um, but I think he slides down into Jamaica, and they'll be able to find a great way to use him. The next team we have to talk about is the DC Tribe, and as we know now, Buchanan Simmons was taken from this DC team. They need a new number one wide receiver, and that is what I'm projecting James Walters to be on this team. They do have Jeffrey Macklin in there, but he's always been a number two. I think bringing in this receiver at a number one, even though it's a second round pick, would be the way to go. Uh, James Walters, 6'6", 225, coming over from the Tucson Vaqueros. He had a great season as well. He didn't get all of the targets, but he was able to make the most of what he had, 325 yards. Um, he was fighting for, for uh, targets, but he did really well. 19 yards per reception, that was a lot higher um, through some points in the year. So this is a guy that I think would be a steal if DC was able to get him at this point. And another steal would be Miami picking up Quez Rich. There are just so many good receivers in this class. Almost 400 yards for Quez Rich. Um, second in touchdowns with three. Um, he had the Terrence Hudnall bump, uh, but uh, he was he wasn't even the top targeted receiver, uh, but he did make the most of what he had. Uh, and I think Quez Rich, um, putting him alongside some other receivers, replacing MJ Thomas, would be a great thing for Miami. Um, just having another guy in there to do, do the work that they need. To Pottsville we go, and this time we're giving him BJ Koo, the guard from the Long Island Beavers. Um, BJ Koo, uh, 6'2", 300 pounds. Uh, we know that Dave likes those big, 
big ground and pound offense. He wants to run the ball this year. Uh, BJ Koo would be a great addition to the team to help him do that. Um, we'll see if he's at this point in the draft and if Dave decides to pick him up. And now we have the Wyoming Cavalry back up again. This is the spot that I can see them um, upgrading at defensive end. They do have Paxton Sachs sl slated in as one of their starters. I think that they can do better. I have them selecting London Love, the defensive end from Boise. Uh, London Love, a pretty decent pass rusher, one and a half sacks. Um, he was uh, pretty, pretty solid. He had seven tackles for loss as well. Um, coming around that outside, there wasn't a ton of pass rush, and I think that has a lot to do with uh, the talent we had at offensive line. Uh, but London Love, I think, could do really well for Wyoming. They need somebody there. I think he would be a good fit. So this is uh, the 34th pick, and the Jamaica Hummingbirds are going to take um, Jordan Andrews' player, Vincent Andrews. I think that makes a lot of sense. They do need some offensive line help, so... Uh, this guy really slots right in, and uh, seems like a no-brainer. Now, I could have gone with a third receiver for Des Moines here, um, but they have a lot of other picks, so I decided to jump on to another offensive lineman here with the Baba Tunde Baxter. Um, he could level up that offensive line dramatically, help out with Nolan Pierce if he's staying on the team, um, and make this into a dominant offense because they already have two silver receivers that should should be good enough um, but getting that off the lineman in this spot should be pretty good for them right there. so we're back around to vegas at pick 36 and like i promised um this is this is the spot where we're going to talk the most about vegas's draft pick so currently i have them selecting Bo montana at quarterback now here's the thing he can only be drafted at bronze. And if you're waiting this long for Vegas, I don't know that this is the best plan. Uh, they do have a bronze quarterback already, Rhett Bollinger, um, who I think is a really good build, and I think could be in that Jamie Spencer level guy where you can get a lot out of him, maybe upgrade him over a couple seasons. Um, but if they don't like that, if they're not sold on that, I think Bo Montana would be a good fit, and we'll see where it goes from there. But yeah, so Bo Montana, I think, is the best quarterback still on the board. Um, so a good pick for Vegas if they're looking to fill that spot. And a lot can change with trades and whatnot, as we're still uh, quite a while away from the draft. If I'm honest, there's a lot of things in Detroit that I would want to change, but simply based on the fact that they really don't have cap space, um, they're going to have to draft some offensive linemen to fill out their roster, and Jamar Lamar is available. So I think they take uh, a couple offensive linemen in this draft and they go copper and or bronze and just fill it out. But if if this was a different situation and I see some of the players that they had as starters, I would make a different selection for sure. And finally, one of my favorite late round guys that I think could, uh, I, I imagine him as a late round guy and he just caught fire at the end of the season and got himself into a pretty good position. And with how the rest of the safeties are going, I think that Caleb King would be a good selection here for Santa Fe. They got us. They got to put somebody alongside Derek in that secondary. I think Caleb King, 6'2", 210. This is a guy who put himself uh, put himself in there next to Matt Bradley and said, "No, I'm a good. I'm a good talent too." Uh, he picked off three balls. Uh, had one and a half sacks. He had 15 assist tackles. He was up there in tackles as well uh, for Long Island. Uh, five deflections. This guy was all over the field. He did a little bit of everything. I think Caleb King would be an awesome selection for the Santa Fe Prowl. So that is all I have for this mock draft. Thank you for watching to the end of this video. Uh, I hope that you agree with me on most of these picks, but if you don't, even if you do, let me know uh, in the comments. A um, little self-plug, <laughs> it's not currently when I'm recording this, but uh, it will be my birthday when I'm posting this, uh, so if you want to leave a little like for your old commissioner, Noah, <laughs> leave me a like, leave me a happy birthday in the comments, that will be most appreciated. Um, we're sending out the um, challenge 
for everybody to make a mock draft before the draft comes in September. So um, you can either make a video or just post it in the chat. Uh, we will really appreciate seeing those, and maybe we'll do a little bit of a little bit of a friendly gentleman's game over it. Um, but yeah, so that's it for me right now. We'll be back with probably some more roster breakdowns and maybe another mock draft or two before the, the draft begins. So until then, uh, thank you so very much for watching. Um, yeah, go take over the world. <laughs>